mask of the burial. I'm just going to drive home and treat the day, I'll show you. And the mask here in Kentucky. And the epistle for this day of the mass of the burial of Mr. John it is taken from St. Paul's letter, the first letter of Thessalonians, chapter 4. Brethren, we will not have you ignorant concerning them that are asleep, that you be not sorrowful, even as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them who have slept through Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you in the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them who have slept. For the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with commandment, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and, and the dead who are in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be taken up together with them in the clouds to meet Christ into the air. And so shall we be always with the Lord. Wherefore, come ye one another with these words. And then the Gospel. Taking that according to St. John, chapter 11. At that time Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But now also I know that whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus saith to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live. And everyone that liveth and believeth in me shall not taste death forever. Believest thou this? She said to him, Yea, Lord, I have believed, and thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, who art come into this world. Thus are the words of today's holy gospel. Amen. Just a few considerations on this great mystery of the of death. Remember, it says Saint Paul tells us it is given for all men to die, and after death the judgment. Everyone is given death, and then we are given death because of the fact that Adam decided to bring death into the world. He decided to bring death in the world because of his sin of pride. He decided that he would bring death in the world because he thought that he would be like unto God. And that he would have the knowledge of good and evil. He did not want to be evil. He just simply wanted to be like God with the knowledge of good and evil. Because one of the great, great questions of man down these last 6,000 years why doesn't God tell us about evil? Why didn't God tell us what evil is and what to do about evil? If only we had been God, we would do so much better. We knew the way of evil. For God is good, if he is good, he'll make sure that there is no evil. And if God is good and he sees evil, he will crush it the second that he sees it. And if God is good and he sees evil and a man comes back to him, he will make sure that he is punished most justly and he will not allow him to become to any kind of false repentance. And if God is good, then maybe he will forgive all evil, no matter how evil it is, and wipe it all out so that no one is eternally judged. And there is a great dispute amongst mankind. What do we do about evil? But all agree on this. God isn't right. Satan came down and he spoke to, the, to Eve. And he asked her a question. Why did God tell you not to eat of this fruit? Why is it a forbidden fruit? It's because he doesn't want you to know about evil. Because if you knew about evil, you would know what to do about it. And you would be wiser than God in the dealing with evil. Some of us will forgive all evils so that no one is punished. Others will punish all evils so that no one is forgiven. Others will punish their friends, punish their enemies and forgive their friends. And others will do other things and decide and make their own rules about what good and evil is, what evil we can permit, what evil we cannot permit. We are so wise. 
What happens when man becomes the master of good and evil? He becomes evil. What happens when man becomes a master of good and evil? He brings death upon others, and he brings death upon himself. And hence it is given, says St. Paul, by means of the Holy Ghost. It is given for all men who are sons of the proud Adam, who thought he would know better about good and evil, when God created Adam, he only showed him good. When he created Adam, he walked with him every day and showed him the wonderful good that is in the world around him. And he was not meant to know evil. He was not meant to be immersed in evil. He was only meant for good. But Adam decide, decided, why did God leave evil out of my life? I want to be the governor of my own ways. I want to decide what is right and what is wrong. And I want to know about evil, and I want to be the judge of evil, because I am most wise. And look at all the disputes against God down the last 6,000 years. So many have left God because of evil. So many have wondered, why does God allow evil? When God is only good. But the first thing we can say about evil is when man decides that he wants to know more about evil than God, he wants to control evil better than God, which is simply the absence of a good that's supposed to be there, when he wants to punish evil in a wiser way than God, all that he does is keep evils upon evils. What does the modern rulers, what do the modern rulers want? They want heaven on earth. They want a safe earth. They want an earth in which there is no pain, and hence they have developed medicine. And medicine is going to make people healthy, it's going to take away all headaches, it's going to take away all cancer, it's going to take away all sickness, and we're going to live forever healthy, healthy, healthy. Medicine is going to take away the evil of bad health. And we're going to educate man. And education and knowledge is going to take away the evil of lies. And, they're all, and the evil of bad people, if we still believe in bad people, is going to be taken away by our guns and by our surveillance of our good Western countries. And all of the evils, the things we perceive to be evil, we are going to take away and we're going to make a heaven on earth. And man decides to build a heaven on earth. What has he created? A kingdom of pandemonium. A kingdom that is called hell. As man tries to build his life on earth so that he will be the one that decides how to eradicate evil and he will not follow God's Ten Commandments anymore. He will not accept God's wisdom anymore. He is going to find his own way to eradicate evil on man's terms and not God's terms. St. Paul says of such a man, it is given for all men to die because we are the sons of Adam who brought death in the world by his pride. He brought death in the world because he thought he could overcome evil and he could rule over evil better than God. And hence, he brought evil into his own blood so that every child of Adam is born with evil in his blood. And when every child comes to the church, we discover that little baby, he's not innocent. That little baby who's a child of Adam, he has death in his blood. He is condemned to death. It is given for him to die. And therefore he must be brought to the church that life might be given to him. And God the Son must become man in order to wage war against death. The death brought into this world by the pride of Adam and by the pride of Adam's sons and the pride of Adam's daughters until the ending of time. So there is death and there is evil. And oftentimes we say with even King David, O oh Lord, how long? How long will thou allow these evils to go on? We experience one evil right now, today. If this was any other year, 
I would be right now in Streaky Bay, Australia, and not here in Kentucky. I would be there at the place of the burial of Mr. John Holmes, and be able to sprinkle the holy water, his body, presence, instead of his body, absence, on the other side of the world. Here it is Wednesday night, in Streaky Bay it is Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock. Here it is 6.37 at night. And there it's in the morning tomorrow. We're not able to be physically present. Why? Because of an evil. Until the great question comes, why does God allow evil? Not every evil is not overcome. Not every evil. Sometimes we make it right past evil. <coughs> Just the other night, I went to the hospital, passed about ten guards trying to block the priest from going to anoint someone. I walked right past every single guard. The man at the front door, outside, took me past every single guard. I went past every single one of them, went straight in, anointed my parishioner in California, and then heard the confession and took the man in the other bed as well, and then gave an absolution for all the others in the, in, in, in the ward. And then headed out without the slightest problem. Walked right past every single one of the police. And every single one of the guards. And every single one of the ones that stopped. Without even being slowed down at all. Sometimes God will let us get past the evil. And other times he will say no. Not today. Not today. Not today. What is the rule about evil? When is it going to be overcome in this world? When is it going to be overcome in the next? When is it good to let evil have an hour? When is it good to let evil be crushed? Evil is tolerated sometimes. Evil is not tolerated other times. And how do we know when is the best time for evil to be tolerated? When do we know the best time when evil is not to be tolerated? It is not we who know. <laughs> God knows. We must work and try to follow his will. We must work and try to do that which is good. And sometimes we will be prevented. And other times we will not be prevented. The angels are in control. We are in the hands of God and not of men. We are in the hands of God and not of the devils. It is given for all men to die, and after death, the judgment. It's given for all men to die because of Adam's pride and Adam's sin. And I am a son of Adam, therefore I must die. It is given. But then there shall be a judgment. Now the judgment is not all so bad. For the judgment is the day in which God hands out rewards. It is a day in which he says, Come to me, beloved of my Father. It's a day in which he says, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Grace shall not be prevented by physical distance. Grace shall not be prevented by the enemies of God and their wicked ways. Grace travels into heaven and to the very ends of the earth. And at this very moment, after such a long delay, two of our prisoners died on January the 7th in the morning. One of Mr. John Holt in Australia, and the other one of Mr. Gene Olson in, color, in, in Kansas. Gene was buried in Colorado and we were able to do his funeral a week and a half ago. Meanwhile, Mr. John has to wait a longer time, now January the 26th, before we can finally do the mass of his burial. Another parishioner of the Society of St. Pius X died a couple of days, about three or four or five days ago, maybe six days ago. But for whatever reason, the priest will not bury him. His funeral is scheduled for February the 18th, possibly the 19th or 20th. So we'll go physically to take care of that burial. Now their funerals are delayed. Now they are made distant. They are trying to block us from getting to the souls that are cared, that are to be cared for. 
But God will not allow this blocking unless it is for the greater good. The grace of God reaches to the very ends of the earth. And we are reminded also, even amongst the saints, the martyrs, when they died, they did not die in the presence of the priest. They died in the presence of a wicked emperor. They died in the presence of a wicked magistrate. They died in the presence of wicked ones. And remember also the wise words of one great martyr of 150 years ago, in 1875 or so, when Garcia Moreno died at the hands of the Masons. They took, they jumped off the, of, of the ledge of his own capital, they took a machete and they hacked him to death. And he said to them, I die, but God does not die. He lived long enough to be able to go into the cathedral just a few feet away. And there he died in the altar, in front of the altar of Our Lady. He died a saint. He died a martyr. His heart is incorrupt. And he said, I die, but God does not die. And God did not die in his heart. And they macheted him, and he died. And his death is glory. There are many, many places where the saints die, and many, many circumstances, but all that matters is this, that we die in the place and the time and with the heart and faith of knowledge and love of God in our hearts, and the place and time where God wills. Some die in the night, some die in the day, some die at young age, some die at old age. We have martyrs and little babies, such as the 500 that were killed by Herod. And these martyrs are saints in heaven. There are others that died as a child. Others that died in their teenage years. And others that died in their 20s. And others that died in their 90s. And others over 100 years old. And all died most beautiful deaths. When they died, the friend of God. And their judgment was most wonderful. It is given for all men to die. And after death, the judgment. And what does God want to judge? He wants to judge us according to our merits. He does not plan demerits. He wants to judge us to say, Have you lived? Come to me, beloved my Father, good and faithful servant, as thou hast done to others, so that it be done unto you. And remember also that those who do not live according to God's ways, those who do not live according to His ways, they are already dead in their hearts, they're already dead in their souls. And then when their body joins their hearts and souls in death, they shall be eternally dead in hell. And they shall reach the judgment of God. They also shall meet the judgments. Those who do not repent, they shall also meet the judgment. And God shall say unto them, Depart from me, accursed and everlasting fire. We're all going to meet the judgment. And those that love God and keep the faith in their hearts, this judgment is most wonderful. Even if we have to stop for a time in purgatory to be purified of our sins, we are going to have a most wonderful judgment. And those that do not love God shall have a most horrible judgment. No one shall escape the justice and the divine mercy of God. He shall have mercy upon those who have turned to him, and he shall have great judgment and justice upon those that have turned away and refused to turn back. He shall have judgment upon families, judgment upon cities, judgment upon nations, judgment upon ages of civilization, judgment upon each individual man. He judges all things. And we are all under the eye of his judgment. Let us live with the justice inside of our hearts and with the faith deeply inside of us. And then we need not worry at whatever time that death comes, at whatever time we are to be put into the ground. But in any case here, we'll close with praying for Mr. John Hone, and also for others. There are many souls that are not able to be buried now. But let us make sure that we pray for all the souls of the, the faithful departed, and that they and, and those who die the friend of God, they shall not they shall receive his grace, and they shall be brought into a peaceful judgment. And right now the judge burial is being done. It does count completely for Mr. John even though we're now 12,000 miles away from him, we have been able to still make sure that the burial is done, the prayers are all done. At the end of the Mass today, 
that will be the non interest that we would normally say with the body present in the Libra Ame, that at the end of that, the Subinite and the prayers going to the graveyard, we will stay here, and then at, at, at the, the prayers that would normally be said with the Benedictus at the graveyard will also be said, and we'll have the complete completion of all the prayers that are to be said for Mr. John Hohn, and then and then and then uh, and then for his repose of his soul, and it, it did live a good life according to the faith. He remained faithful and died in 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 a, a very good odor. Uh, uh, died a holy death and on, on January the seventh, just a few days ago. And so we pray for him and for his family and for all the souls of the faithful departed. And in any case, we'll go ahead and conclude here. Remember, after the mass, the known interest, which we would normally say with the body present. Libra and then the prayers at the graveside will also be said here in the church before we process out. Let it go bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.